You can't defeat me. No, I know. <sighs> but he can. If your Unity animator tab looks like this, this, or this, you may have the wrong approach to using the Unity animator. But what if I told you you can turn your animation window from looking like this to this? Whoa! As a programmer, you can remove all transition lines and all the animator parameters and turn them all into code. I've broken this process down into four easy steps that you can implement in any project, just like for one of my subscribers. Let's begin. Alright, so I've got my scene here, and if I were to press play and go into full screen, you can see I've got a chicken. He can move around, move left, move right, up and down, and he can also jump too. But of course, the one thing missing is the animations. So we're going to add that in today's video. Uh, so if I were to go to the player itself, you can see there's four things. There's the rigid body, the collider, the player movement script, and the animator. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the player movement script itself. So if I were to drag it over, uh, you can see I've got, it's a very small script, by the way. Um, I've got three main variables, the movement speed, the mouse sensitivity, and the jump height. And in the start, I get the rigid body and I also lock the cursor. In the update method, I get the uh, WASD movement, I get the mouse movement, and I rotate the character depending on the mouse movement. And I also check for the jump here. And in the fixed update, I get the velocity direction, and then I apply the velocity, and I'll also update grounded. And putting all this together creates a character which you can move around depending on where it's looking at. So what is step one? Well, step one is adding all the states that you need. So if I were to go to the animator tab, let's just maximize that. You can see I've only got one state at the moment. So I need to add more. All right, so I've got all the states sorted. I've got seven idle animations, all the run animations, all the jump and a punch animation. So what you can do for each of these is you can turn looping on for all of them. And the way that you do that is go to the motion. You can right click and go properties. And you can see that this is the animation here. If I were to scroll down, uh, there is loop time and you just untick that. So for step two, let's start configuring the script and start adding these animations in. So if I were to get the script up here, uh, the first thing we've got to do is get the reference to the animator. Now that we've got the reference, the next step is we need to know what the current animation is right now. What is the animation that is currently playing on the animator? So I'm going to add that as a string. So I'm using it as a string at the moment, but you can also use an integer, and I'll get to that later on in the video. Now the first method I'm going to add is the change animation method. Now this method simply changes the animation. So this method takes in a string and it will change the animator to play this string. But first we need to do some checks. First we need to check if the animation that we want to play isn't actually the one that's already playing. So we check if the current animation is not equal to the target animation. Now to play the animation, I'm not going to use animator.play uh, because that has no transition. I'm going to instead use animator.crossfade. And what Crossfade does is it slowly transitions from the current animation to the next animation. So Crossfade takes in two main things, the state name and the transition duration. So I'm going to put both of those in. So I've just put an optional variable in here and set it to 0.2 because I think 0.2 is a pretty good number when it comes to Crossfade. Um, so I'm going to put that in this parameter here. And we're missing one thing, and that is we need to set the current animation to the animation. So we're updating the current animation here, and we are playing the new animation. So we can test this out. Let's say I want to change it to the punch animation. So I'm going to go over here under my start method and go change animation, and I want it to change to the punch animation when you start. So I'm going to go back to the Unity editor and test this out. Now if I click play, you can see that our character starts punching <laughs> and I can walk around and he just keeps on punching. So this is where step three comes in. We need to play the animations, but how do we know which animations to play? Well, I'm going to add a new method called check animation. 
Now what this one does is it's called every single frame and it will check which animation to play depending on the current circumstance. So let's go through the list. So we've got movement, right? Now what is our movement variable? Well movement is set up here every single frame and it gets the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. So essentially it grabs was D or the arrow keys. So what does this mean? Well, let's make our first check to be what if movement.y equals one. So what does this mean? This means that either the W key is pressed or the up arrow key is pressed. And in simple terms, you are moving forward, right? And what do we want to do when you move forward? Well, we want to change the animation to be run forward. Now keep in mind that when I'm doing this, when I put in run forward, I'm making sure that it matches exactly what this word is, right? I have to get it exactly right. Now let's move on to the next one. Let's go else if, what if the movement.y is equal to minus one? Well, in that way we'll be moving backwards. So I'm going to change the animation to be uh, run backwards. And then for running left and running right, I'm going to check the X movement. So now we've done all the running animations, but there's one thing left out. What if the Y and the X movement is equal to zero? Well, then none of these checks are going to work. So if none of them work, then I want to change the animation to be the first idle animation. So if I were to click play now and move around, it doesn't seem to work. Okay, here we go. So check animation isn't actually called anywhere. So in the update function at the very bottom, I'm going to check the animation. Now I can move around, I can run forward, I can run backwards, I can run side to side, and that all works just fine. But if I were to go to the animator pane, you can see I've got a bunch of idle animations that I can choose from. At the moment, I'm just going to idle one and that's it but I'm going to show you a functionality that you could only do via script that's very hard to do with the animator panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it cycle through these idle animations. And to do that, I'm going to go under here and I'm going to get the current idle animation. So we're keeping track of which idle animation we're currently at. And then in the start method, I'm going to add a coroutine. So I'm going to start this coroutine and in this coroutine I'm going to have a while true in here so it will start in the start method and continue forever. Now I'm going to make it wait two seconds and then I'm going to increase the current idle by one and then if the current idle exceeds seven or it is seven then I'm going to set it back to zero again. So how does this benefit us? Well if I go down to here currently we're just setting it to idle one but I'm going to add a new method in here. So now instead of just hard coding it to the first idle animation, I'm going to run this method which will check the idle. So I'm going to put a switch in here and I'm going to put the current idle variable as what we're looking at. All right, so what this does is it checks the current idle variable if it's zero, it will play the first auto animation. If it's one, it will play the second. And if it's two, it will play the third and so on. So it very much depends on what the current idle is at the moment. Now, if I don't do anything, you should see that it will start to cycle through these animations. And I'm not doing anything at the moment. If I were to have a look at the animator pane, you can see exactly what's going on is every two seconds, it is crossfading to the next one. And now you can see exactly what crossfading is because you can see that one is playing, but then the other starts playing at the same time. And this happens for 0.2 of a second. So you're in complete control of the crossfade. If I start running, you can see all these different animations start playing with a 0.2 seconds of crossfade in between. If I were to stop, it goes to the current idle animation. So this is great and all, but what about for the jump animation? And what if I want to punch, how do I do that? Because it's an instant animation, it's not something that we can just go and check along the list. So I'm going to do a few more extra steps to put that in. First of all, let's do the punch animation. So what are the requirements that we need to meet? I want the player to be grounded when they are 
wanting to punch. So I'm going to make that the first requirement. Then the second requirement is I want to be pressing the mouse button. And if those two are met, then I want to change the animation to be the punch animation. If I were to start punching, you can see the punch animation starts. And then when the idle animation starts playing next, then it will override it. So how do we make sure the punch goes throughout the whole animation without disruption? First of all, on our check animation method, let's put a requirement in here. So if the current animation is actually the punch animation, then let's return it, right? So if it's punch, we do not want to do all these other checks. If I were to click play and start punching, you can see that it punches forever now. So this is where a behavior script comes in. So over here, you can see that we can add a behavior when I click on punch. So we want to reset the animation when the punch animation finishes. So I'm going to add a behavior and call it on finish and open that up. So this is what this looks like and it gives us uh, five different methods to choose from. Now the one that I'm going to choose is on state enter. Now there's one thing I need to do before doing this is I need to go back to our player movement and we need a way to reset the animation. So what I need to change is currently the change animation method is set to private, but now I want to access it wherever. So I'm going to set this to public now so that anything can now change the animation of the player. So if I were to go back to our on finish script, here's what we want to do is since the animator is also on the player, we can go animator got get component and let's get the player movement script that's also attached to the game object. Now with this, we are going to call the change animation method. And what animation do we want to change to? So up here, I'm going to add another variable. And so I want to change it to the animation string. So there we go. Whenever it enters the state, it will now trigger that. There's one more thing, and that's the punch animation. It will never play because the moment it enters the state, it will immediately swap to another state. So let's change that. I want to only make it change when it reaches the end of the state. So this is what I'm going to do. In our player movement script, I'm going to add another variable. And I'm going to add time. So this here, it will execute an animation after a certain amount of time. So if I were to put all this under a method called validate, and we're going to do a check here. <laughs> Right, so let's walk through this here. So if the time is greater than zero, we are going to start the wait coroutine. And this wait coroutine waits the certain number of seconds that is time, and then it starts the validate method. So if time is actually uh, zero, then it will just go straight into the validate method. So now let's update this call here. So now instead of just playing a string, I'm going to now add the crossfade and add the time. And then the time, well, we can get the time by the state info. So let's go state info dot length. And that is literally how long the length of the clip is, how long the length of the animation clip is. So now it will change the animation when the state or the animation clip is now finished. So there's one more change to make, and that's in the play of movement, is we actually need to go time minus crossfade. This is done so that when the transition will end, it will end just as the original state is finishing. So this makes it so it's exactly perfect and bang on. So now let's try this out. So at our punch, we want to transition to a new animation. And this is where I'm going to add something else. There's no specific animation that I want to make it transition to. I just want to make it go back to normal. So I want to leave this blank and make it reset to the normal transition line. So here's what I'm going to do. So under validate, I'm going to check if the current animation is nothing. And if it is nothing, then the animation that I want to play next is uh, whatever is next in the line. So I'm going to run the check animation method. But if the current an animation is actually something, then I want to crossfade it. So now if I were to click punch, you can see it punches. 
and it only punches. So let's make this full screen so you can see exactly what's happening. I'll click punch and now it punches and it goes back to its normal state line. So that was a mouthful, but now we're going to go into the jumping. How do we do the jumping here? Uh, so this is a bit more complicated because there are three separate animations here. So how do we get started? First of all, in the update function, this is where we check the jump. So for the jump, we check if it's grounded and we check if space is pressed and then we add a force. Well, I'm going to add one more line to this. So now we'll run this animation whenever we start the jump. And just like the punch last time, if the current animation is jump start, we do not want to run any of these other animations. Right, so there we go. So now we have the animation jump start play when we start the jump. And now it cannot transition to anything else when we press jump. So now let's go back over to Unity. And we want to make it so whenever jump start finishes, we want to transition to jump ear. Put the on finish script on, and the animation I want to transition to is jump ear. Now let's go back to our script. So currently <laughs> it starts with jump start, and then it will transition to jump ear. But we want it to keep going jump ear until we hit the ground. Let's put another requirement under here. And let's go if the current animation is jump ear. So first let's return because if we're in the ear, we don't want it to run forward or run idle, run idle, whatever that means. So that's the first thing we need to do. The second thing is we need to check if it's grounded because if we now hit the ground after we jump, we want to change the animation to something else. So we're going to change this to jump end. And the one more thing I need to add is now, if the current animation is now jump end, then I also want it to return. So let's walk through what's going here. So when I click space, it triggers the jump start animation. And then when the jump start animation is finished, it will transition to the jump ear animation. So then we check here, is the current animation jump ear? And if so, it will return. But if you are grounded, then we'll change the animation to the jump end animation. And on the jump end animation here, let's click it and add the on finish. So when it finishes, I want it to transition to the empty string and that will reset everything, everything again. So let's try this out on full screen, jump and it lands, jump and it lands. And if I were to go to our panel here, you can see exactly what's happening. I will, I will jump and it's in the air and it ends as well. So now that's jump all sorted. Now do you remember when I said that you can use string or integers to measure the current animation? Well this is how you do it. So putting in integers is a lot quicker than putting in strings. So what we can do is we can put it as a constant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call animator.string to hash and I'm going to put in the exact string for the animation and I'm going to make that equal a variable, so idle. And then do the exact same thing for all of them. Let's go to our start method. Let's just do a bit of play around. So if I were to go animator.crossfade. So now instead of putting in a string, I'm going to put in the integer and I'm going to put in the transition and that accepts it just fine. Instead of putting in a string and taking in a string, you instead take in an integer. And if I were to do that, you can see all these two things break. But this method here, that stays the same. So you can have a bit of fun in changing that all around. There we go. I hope that brings more clarity of how to animate like a programmer. And I actually used this technique in one of my videos where I talk about everything you need to know about making a 2D platformer controller. So you can go check that out.